Good day everyone and uh, welcome back to my little home workshop. Uh, I've got a surprise for you today. Um, this is a new project that I'm currently working on on this channel and uh, what I've got in front of me is a little CNC lathe from 1985. It's quite old and uh, this was, believe it or not, this was made by a company here in Australia, so an Australian company called Hercus. And Hercus started out making manual machines and doing other sorts of engineering work as well. Roughly in the uh, mid 1980s, they partnered up with a company called Anchor. And you'll see on the front here, this has an Anchor control. And our Anchor is an acronym, which means Australian Numerical Control and Automation. This day and age, Anchor actually makes um, five axis CNC tool and cutter grinders that make uh, drill bits and end mills and that sort of thing. Now, about this little lathe, I actually, uh, these were predominantly built for training. They're actually a, a high-end, quite precise little lathe for back in the day. Didn't have much memory. Uh, a lot of these went to high schools to uh, train future generations of students. Uh, and my one came out of a regional high school here in Victoria. Now, currently what I'm doing with mine, I brought it home. And unfortunately, I turned it on and uh, the screen turned on but that was about it really i could home the x-axis but the z-axis was dead and i couldn't turn the spindle on so sadly um, i deemed it brain dead and i'm starting on the retrofit now originally i was going to replace and put ball screws in and i actually even bought the ball screws um, from china to replace here but uh, under further investigation, I realized that the ball screws in this are actually satellite screws. They're made by a Swiss company called Rollis, and they're quite high end. They're very high precision. They're a four start thread. One revolution is four millimeters. And uh, so by looking at the Hercus user group on Facebook, um, I just uh, one of the comments in there was, do not change them. Those screws are very high end. Leave them the way they are. And I took that advice on board, so I'll leave it. Um, I was going to change out the original servo motors and move to uh, steppers and that, but I was uh, convinced not to do that. So the servo motors that came with these uh, machines were quite, quite high end. You can still buy them now and they're worth a lot of money. They were actually made by Electrocraft Corporation in the United States of America, so the USA. And uh, to buy these today, they're still you know, in the thousands of dollars. So considering this lathe has done very little work, I'm going to keep these. Now, I'm going to be working with a few people to get my head around this. Um, electronics is not my background. I can do it. I'm not crash hot at it, but I'll fumble my way through it. So I've tapped into the Hercus uh, CNC user group on Facebook. Um, I've also tapped into my buddy, Anthony McCauley. Um, Anthony runs a YouTube channel called AWA Radiola. Now Anthony has quite a few of these Hercus lathes and even a milling machine and bigger machine in his possession. So um, I've, he's been a good sounding board to bounce things off. Um, I've reconnected with a buddy of mine called Peter Homan. Now, if you've had anything to do with CNC in Australia, Peter Homan is the, I would call him the godfather of the whole CNC DIY retrofit movement here in Australia. And good thing for me, Peter actually resides in Victoria, Melbourne, so uh, he's not too far away. So I've been bouncing off to ideas off him. So with Peter, I've decided to... Um, keep those servo motors and use Gecko drives. So Gecko servo drivers. And uh, I've been going through Peter and his web store to purchase those particular items. So what I'll do here in the meantime, I'll actually pull this apart a little bit. It's just sitting here at the moment for the demonstration. So one of the main things I like about this little Hercus, and I'll just take the end cap off here, the bolts are out is this way cover. And this way cover protects the bed and there's no swarf to get down. It's quite an ingenious little idea. And it slides out the back of the lathe like this. Okay, and that stops a lot of the swarf going down internally into here as well. Um, I currently have the motor out of the machine 
and the motor is with Peter Homan. He's currently trying to uh, get it working. He's got it working, but he wants to be able to get it working so I can rigid tap. So obviously in the forward and reverse motion. So he's currently working on that for me, which would be great. Now this machine being so old, it doesn't have encoders. It uh, has resolvers, all right? And they're a totally different setup. I think they're a little bit more analog than digital. So what I had to do with these is take the resolvers off. These would get, these went on the back of the servo motors. So what I'll do here to get my servo motors to talk to the Gecko servo drivers is that I've bought some AMT 102V. So these are little encoders and I got those through Peter Homan. And I'll put these on the back of my servo motors. So these motors will now become, uh, they can talk back to the controller and be a closed loop system. So instead of running, you know, an, an open loop system like stepper motors, unless you had encoders on them, um, I've got some feedback. So this will make this lathe precision once more. Another little side job I've got to do is uh, make some more way, way cover wipers. And I drew these up in CAD and 3D printed a proof of concept. So they'll go on for there and on the front. And uh, I'll probably no doubt laser cut these out of some rubber. So we have a, a laser cutter at work that I have access to, only a CO2 laser, but that should do the job. The controller, that's something I haven't spoken about. So this old controller, um, as I said before earlier, that I deemed it brain dead, so it's going and uh, I won't be here. So I've decided in, um, in talks with uh, Jatinda from Masso, I've decided to go with the Masso system. Now, the Masso does have a couple of little small limitations with the lathe. I, I believe it won't do um, tapered threads or live tooling, but that doesn't mean it will never do it. That's just probably something that is not happening at the moment. So if you'd like to um, pop back later on, I will, uh, when the Masso arrives, I'll do an unboxing of that and, and have a bit more of a discussion about Masso and why I went with Masso. Uh, to me, it's a no-brainer for what I want to do in my little home workshop. Well, today was just a little introduction about the project that I'm working on. Um, if this is your first time here to my channel, welcome. I've been on YouTube for quite some time. However, I'm not, uh, this is not my full-time job. So I'm actually an educator, a high school teacher. So if you'd like to come back and watch my progress in this, feel free. Please um, you bookmark the page or subscribe and the next update will come out. So thank you for following along and uh, look, I hope to see you back here next time when I do another installment of this little CNC lathe retrofit. Catch you on the next video. Bye for now.